Hi, I'm Jen Kramer, a staff author here at O'Reilly Media. I'm looking at four hot new features in Bootstrap 4 Alpha 1. Bootstrap 4 was released in its alpha form back in mid-August. Watch for a few more alpha releases, two beta releases, and two release candidates before the final release. The third new feature we'll look at in Bootstrap 4 is some super awesome sassy goodness. Bootstrap 4 has decided to dump Less, a JavaScript-based CSS preprocessor, in favor of the more popular SAS CSS preprocessor. All of the CSS styling that comes with Bootstrap is styled through the SAS using the SCSS syntax. One of the first things to, that most people want to do to Bootstrap is change colors, fonts, or even some of the media query breakpoints. Fortunately, all of this is easy to do with the SAS files. In order to work with SAS, you'll need to look at the SAS files bundled with the Bootstrap distribution. I've also included it in the bundle of files for this video, which you can download at the link below. You'll also need a SAS compiler. I recommend using Koala, available at koalaapp.com for PC and Mac platforms. So this is my current Bootstrap 4 website that I'm looking at here on my screen. And over on the left-hand side here in Sublime Text, I have a list of all of the files that are available to me with this particular implementation. Here's the SCSS folder, and you'll see that there are approximately one jillion files located inside of here. And we could clearly spend hours going through what each of these files is and how they're configured. But I'm going to focus on the one file that really will do a lot for you if you pay attention to, which is the variables.scss file. And so I have this file open here on my screen. And if you take a look at this, uh, you'll notice that it starts with a number of comments. And the very first thing that it tells you is to copy the settings from this file into the provided underscore custom.scss to override the bootstrap defaults without modifying the key versioned files. This is super important to do because this is going to allow bootstrap to upgrade to the next versions without overriding any changes that you might have to this file. Unfortunately, as of this recording, the underscore custom.scss file is not included in the distribution, and it's actually not part of the SAS compiling process. So for this demonstration, I'm going to do exactly what it says not to do. I'm going to edit the variables file here directly. However, I would strongly recommend that you not use Bootstrap for Alpha for any production work. And I would recommend you definitely wait until this custom file that is mentioned here in the comment is available to you before trying to customize Bootstrap for real. In any case, as you scroll down the page here, there's a number of comments that are present here in the SAS. And then the first thing that we run across is a whole bunch of different colors. Here at lines 29 through 39, these are all colors that you can completely customize however you would like to do so. And so for example here, if you don't like the blue associated with brand primary, maybe you'd like to change that to your company's color. So instead of leaving this here as the following blue color, I'm simply going to comment it out by putting a double slash here in front of it. This is how you can make a single lined comment in SAS. And I can change the color to something like red. And just type that in and with a semicolon at the end. And I've got that comment there to remind me of what this was originally. If I now save this file, my Koala installation is all set up to go here. The file that I'm actually compiling is called scss slash bootstrap.scss. I have this output to a bootstrap.css file. I've currently got this set up to go to an expanded format so that I can read the outputted CF CSS if I wanted to since I'm still in development. And um, here in my Jumbotron folder, I have a web page that I can take a look at. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up in the browser. And now you can see here what this page looks like. So you can see my bright red button here. This was previously a darker blue color. And now it's taken on the bright red. You can also make other interesting changes here with this new version of Bootstrap 4. And one of the amazing new features is here starting at line number 44. This is talking about some variables here, like enable flex, enable rounded, enable shadows. Previously, Bootstrap 3 shipped with a separate style sheet that had in it some various additional styling that was present in Bootstrap 2, but removed in Bootstrap 3. Bootstrap 2 was designed with gradients and drop shadows, and those were pulled out in favor of flat styling for Bootstrap 3, but there was still a second style sheet that shipped in case you wanted to maintain those. 
Now in Bootstrap 4, they've gotten rid of that additional style sheet and instead centralized those settings for gradients and drop shadows right here in these variables. So in other words, if you want to bring back your gradients or your drop shadows, all you have to do is change the settings of false to true, recompile your file, and uh, those settings will be present in your file. I'm going to demonstrate this with rounded which stands for, of course, rounded corners. If you look here in my current web page, you'll see we have some rounded corners here on the edges of the nav bar, some rounded corners on our buttons. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set rounded to false and save that so that it compiles. And when the page refreshes here, you'll see now I have all pointy corners here on my web page in my design that all of the rounded corners have uniformly been removed with a single variable. So that's a really nice feature here in Bootstrap 4. Some of these other enable variables that are present here that are of note is the very first one, enable flex. Currently, the way the Bootstrap grid system is set up is using floats, as many grid systems currently are. However, this variable for enable flex allows you to switch from a float-based grid system to a flex box based grid system. Flexbox is a new way of dealing with CSS layouts. It's compatible with Internet Explorer 11 and higher in the current syntax. There's a different syntax that's in use for Internet Explorer 10, and yet a third in syntax that's available for Internet Explorer 9. So if you're very concerned with supporting old versions of Internet Explorer, this is likely not something that you're going to want to turn on. But if you're lucky enough to be working in an environment where you can work with more recent versions of browsers, you may indeed want to try experimenting with the Flexbox option here. If you don't know anything about SAS or you need to brush up on the latest features, be sure to check out my video, Getting Started with SAS, available in the Safari library here at O'Reilly. Finally, be sure to sign up for email notification when the new Bootstrap 4 training title is released so you can learn everything there is to know about Bootstrap 4.